You know, I must be crazy. It's uh, God Almighty o'clock in the morning. It's still dark outside. And I've got the car loaded. Garrett's sitting in the back. That's my mate Garrett. We're going treasure hunting together. And I'm going off to spend the day with 20 sweaty blokes crawling around a field <laughs> full of horse shit on my hands and knees with our metal detectors telling ourselves we're having a good time. And at home I've left a lovely warm bed, a pot of coffee and a beautiful wife. I think it's something that happens to you when you hit second childhood. Anyway, I'll take a few vins today and let you see how it goes on. Keep your fingers crossed. If I don't come home with a treasure hoard, I could be a dead man. So I'm here now as well. Um, yeah, this is what the well-dressed metal detectors looks like. Eye protection to protect me from the glare of the gold that comes up from the ground. A woolly hat to hide all the doubloons inside. And a rather nice red jacket just to uh, add a touch of fashion to it. So here we are. You can see us all here. A right noisy lot. And uh, a lot of good detectors in here today. There's a lot of whites in here. There's Deus. There's 18 pros, so it will be interesting to see which one produces the most. So the sun's up, the detectorists are out, and look at them! They're all getting chatter from each other. And they're underneath these great big power lines. Now I know it's usually a bit like that when you first start here, but we have all of these amazing fields to detect. So I still haven't quite worked out why we always start in one place then spread out from there. So anyway, being like I am, I've taken myself away from the pack. I've come away to the top of the fields and I'm having a look around here. You can see they're all searching down here. So if there's any creep on anything, it's kind of gone downhill. But I also notice there's some big hollows here. Don't know if you can see them. But there's some big hollows in the land itself. So I thought I'd have myself a walk across there and then come right down that ridge at the very end to the field on the other side of that woodland and just see what I can find. So fingers crossed. I get asked, you know, why do you go out metal detecting? It's windy, it's cold, it's lonely. Just look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm in a field on the top of the hills. The sun is just coming over the top. The stubble's nice and short and soft, so I can detect here without any problems at all. And there's just nobody been up here, really. Obviously, the farmer's been up here, but not many other people have been up here. And just stopping for a moment or two and having a look out amongst all of this. It's absolutely stunning. And way over there in the distance, Fintorn, the Murray Firth, looks absolutely beautiful. Now this is one of the curses of Metal Detecting. Never fails to annoy. You get a hit and it comes up as a reasonable hit. And look at that. And what you've got there it's what we call a hot rock. It's a bit of coke. It's actually, it's quite interesting. It's sometime in the past, it's fallen out of the firebox of a steam traction engine that's been on these fields ploughing. And this is what falls out. But unfortunately, it, it picks up on the metal detector and it shows it as all sorts of things. Sometimes you get a heavy iron hit on it and you kind of know what it is. Other times you'll get a hit that might be copper or all sorts of things. And it's an absolute blemming case. And quite often when I've worked on fields like this, I go home with a pocket full of this stuff. Now if I had an open fire, that would be grand. But you know I haven't. So, hot rocks. Eh, eh. Now, a lot of people going into fields love to get right out into the middle of the field. Now, you see, this is that big field I was on. It's about a half a mile long. I mean, it's quite a field. Now, a lot of people like to get right out in the middle because they're convinced that that's where they're going to find things. But for me, it's always the edges of the fields that are interesting because this is the place that people would sit 
to have their bait, to have their sandwich. This is the place where they would stumble. Getting up down here, there's a little stream down there, you see. They'd go down this ditch, through the stream, stumble. Or this is where they would stop for a picnic. Or if something broke down, this is where they would likely bring the horse and tack to fix it. So for me, it's the edges of the fields that I find the most interesting. And I think some of the nicest finds that I've made have actually been along the edges of a field. Now, quite often you can find old roads as well, tucked away under the soil, again along the edge of a field. Because if your farmer had a road, he wasn't going to go right through the middle of his crop. It would be tucked along the side of the field, ideally alongside a stream where they can get water from. Now the other thing about this area is, all around this region of Scotland, there's been every sort of battle you can imagine. There's been Picts fighting, there's been Vikings in here, there's been Romans in here, there's been English soldiers, there's been Highlanders, you name it. Where did all these people camp? Well they always camped next to a freshwater stream. They didn't have every yarn in those days, you know, you couldn't nip out to Tesco and get a 48 pack of bottled water. So people would find nice areas, flat areas, sheltered behind a bit of a hill, ideally with a fresh water source, and they'd give them good visibility. Now this area here is something just like that. Good viz, nice and high, and a stream. So, fingers crossed, don't know what we're going to find. So when they tell you they're out on the field in the rain and the snow, a bloody well not. Look, they're sitting here next to the tent with a cake, <laughs> having a big gossip about who's got the biggest coin. And you should have seen the hammy that got away. <laughs> yeah, plenty of silvers coming up. Really? Yeah, lots of silver. One very rare one as well, I believe. Now you see, this is what you dig with. You use an old cigar case like that that he's got in his hand there because he hasn't got a spade and he's just going to dig with his garret. <laughs> now no one's going anywhere until we see that treasure box lifted out and the padlock broken off it. Have you put your iron discriminator on? Hey. Have you put your iron discriminator on it? And if no, it starts, if, it's, if you put it on and you go over and it starts farting at you, it's a plowshare. So, oh. No farting there, is there? No. Clear as a bell, that one. Do you know that could be somebody's treasure, couldn't it? This could be it, lads. This could be the one that you retire on. I'll be able to say to people, and I was there. Farmer's got a JCB if you want one brought in. Well, it's been a grand day. I don't know what time it is now, but it looks like it's about 25 to o'clock. And I can see the guys are all starting to wander back now towards the bottom of the field. We must have done 100 acres today, just been amen amazing, absolutely amazing. There's been some really nice stuff found as well. There's been silvers, Charles I, Victoria Bunheads, lots of little bits of relics, a couple of little bits of jewellery, I believe, as well, cartwheel pennies, farthings, and lots and lots of rubbish. But these are all good guys, and I've noticed they've all picked it up, they've taken it away with them, they've filled their holes in been smashing being out with this lot today I have really enjoyed it so well done Steve for organising all of this and Paul, he's Mara good lad for supporting him as well and I think I'm going to wander back now by the way, this isn't yellow jaundice here it's just the way the light is at the moment it makes me look like I'm about to die and I haven't got cloud makeup on either it just looks like I have so you can hear the winds picking up now get the wee bit blustery so I'm going to go back to the car now and count me treasure I'll see you there